This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless A Trading Frank. It's approximately 8.34 p.m. on a beautiful summer evening on September 3rd, 2019. This is a strategic live webinar, market and stock update webinar. We're gonna cover both. Session will be recorded, uploaded to the Google YouTube channel for viewing by all other members at their own convenient time as well as anyone else out there with the internet connection. Very valuable resource, as I've always said, and as you very well know, the forecasts have been overall very correct. And more importantly, staying informed and connected with the markets, even if you're not actively trading, it is extremely critical that everyone has a full uh, body of information regarding what is happening with the US financial markets and why they're doing what they're doing. So on that note, let us begin. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. The only other plug-in uh, for my service is the Instagram channel, where at the end of the evening, I go ahead and post a few options charts and highlights of some of the uh, uh, more winning trades. It's primarily for marketing and promotional purposes, not for real-time content delivery. So please create an Instagram account and follow us there and you'll be, um, it, it's very useful, and I, uh, and, um, and, and at the same time, uh, you will find uh, an excellent source of uh, resource, aside from the real-time Twitter feed, where all the content is delivered on a real-time basis during market hours, and these webinars, two or three times a week, two times a week mostly, I'm gonna move it on to about three times a week, depending on market conditions, and, uh, and that's enough info because we don't want to have TMI. We do not want to have it too much information overload, in which case it's going to be analysis paralysis. Um, saying all that, let us begin. A couple of broad topics. What you're seeing behind you is the weekly uh, S&P 500 futures charts, the E-mini chart. Futures are slightly higher right now or slightly lower by about two points or so. Um, and uh, this is what you're seeing on the longer term weekly basis. Before I go into it, uh, going uh, forward, I'm gonna try to keep these sessions as brief as possible, but provide you all with relevant, actionable information on the forecasting side, so you're all prepared to deal with this intense volatility that we are incurring on a daily basis, and I believe we'll be incurring going forward almost every week and every day. Not that we like it, but that's what we have to deal with. And But as long as we know where the potholes are, we know where, where the cliffs are, uh, we are going to we are going to survive and, uh, and, and do well. Remember, net-net, the rule number one in trading is not that you never lose. I've heard that a few times and I kind of laugh. It's how to deal with your losses, make money back up, and manage your position. That is the hardest thing to do for every trader, including myself. Uh, and you have to practice really hard how to position size, how to take profits intraday, how to hold things on a setup, on a swing basis, and let it flow regardless of whether it's down one day or it's down two days, as long as the over a longer term trend on the longer term setups are fine, you wanna sit with it. We have shown numerous examples of massive winners, whether it be a Chipotle, um, whether it be a Pizza Hut, uh, whether it be many, many bio, biotech stocks, some of them actually got bought out, um, whether it be Roku, uh, highlighting a whole bunch of uh, different things that we have uh, delivered to our uh, customers and our, our uh, members, and one big. So setups are a totally different story than in scalping profits intraday, which you can do with multiple trades that I put out there. Saying all that, we are in an intensely volatile market that is held hostage to presidential tweets, held hostage to comments from the Chinese government, as well as their uh, as, as well as one of the more important outlets for the Chinese government called the Global Times. Their editor tends to tweet uh, certain comments of what he thinks the Chinese government might do or not do, and that also rocks the market quite a bit, as you all know. So we're dealing with a very, very, um, uh, uh, not just volatile environment, but we are dealing with a very unpredictable environment, but we will look at the longer term picture and, and try to figure out what's going on. That's my job, and I'll try to do my best as possible. Saying all that, before I go any further, uh, what I was saying was we want to keep these sessions reasonably brief, try to keep it within 30 to 40 minutes. So we have everyone's, so the attention span of all our members and other people who listen to these uh, video casts uh, 
uh, that, that their attention uh, uh, span remains focused, um, and that's it. So first of all, what I'm going to show you is the economic calendar. Um, very, very important, and I'm going to start off with um, going backwards from Friday. Friday, we have, again, we know the power of what the Powell's, uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell, what his speech is, the power he has over the market, that comes in at 12.30 p.m. on Friday. Okay, so this is probably the most critical uh, speech of the week. We also have uh, in September the interest rate, uh, the FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee Fed meeting, where they're going to cut rates, hopefully by 50 basis points, or at least by quarter for, uh, percentage point, which is 25 basis points. Um, we shall see. But 50 basis points, I think, with the weakness in the U.S. economy, as we saw this morning, with the ISM manufacturing number falling below 50, this is showing that this tit-for-tat trade tariff war between the United States and China is starting to take a toll to, uh, uh, on the U.S. economy also. So obviously that's not good. But remember, stocks need to be bought during softness, not when they are very strong, right? That's rule, that's rule number two. So, uh, or it's actually rule number one, because you want to buy them when everyone's just kind of giving up on them and you want to sell them when they start to enter it or when they're getting a little too excited. We're very far for excitement on an emotional basis, on investors' intelligence or bearish bull bear uh, ratios. We are, uh, the bearish ratio is extremely high, extremely high, both with institutional as well as retail emotional traders, what we call RET traders. So they're both in the same camp. So there's lots of cash out there, something like seven, um, uh, the, the trillion, the six, seven, probably more trillion dollars. I don't have the exact number sitting in cash money market accounts. Imagine if even one trillion comes into the market, you're going to have a 600 point pop, four to 600 point pop. That's just the way it works, all right? Uh, I will be uh, uh, tweeting out an article from Bank of America that came out this morning where one of their top technicians, who's actually a very smart guy, doesn't come up too often, uh, come around too often, he um, he mentioned how this is the time to buy with a one to three month time frame. That's exactly my view. We are not going to go out and say, oh, what's going to happen next year? We have no freaking clue. Um, but uh, the bottom line is a one to three month time frame is good enough, good enough for us to make a decent sum of money and do the right thing. So we're going to start off with Friday. Jerome Powell speaks at 12.30 p.m. Uh, then we have the employment situation. This is also very important right before the market opens. That's the jobs data. And um, and uh, and uh, this is uh, the, the going to see what the strength of the U.S. labor market is. Very important. Then we uh, – now we're going to go back uh, to Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday with today, so we're done with Tuesday. Um, Wednesday. So what do we have on Wednesday? We have um, a Fed, lots of Fed speakers. Now, they do have some impact on the market because some are voting members, some are non-voting members, right? Some sit at the round table, some don't, but their uh, comments and thoughts are very important um, because that's that's how the Federal Reserve is thinking. John Williams, Robert Kaplan at 10 o'clock, John Williams at 9.30, Michelle Bowman at 12.30, James Bullard. Wow, look at how many of them are. I've never seen one back-to-back -back like this. 12.30 p.m., Neil Kashkari, who's actually a dove who wants big rate cuts um, at 1 p.m. Then we have the Beige Book. Okay, the Beige Book is the Federal Reserve's read on business conditions and such, U.S. economic economic conditions, and that Beige Book is at 2 p.m. Very, very important. Right after that at 3.15 p.m., this is wild. We have one, two, three, four, five, six Fed, uh, Fed governors and uh, uh, Federal Reserve uh, mem members and speakers um, on tap tomorrow. So this is going to be very, very busy starting off right from the morning. So that's Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Now, going into Thursday, we are going to have the ADP employment report. That's the private payrolls data, ADP. So that's going to give us a read into the uh, employment numbers, on uh, which don't always match with the general uh, government uh, labor department uh, release. But uh, this is, this is uh, looked on as more accurate. We have jobless claims, gives us an idea of how many people are claiming uh, uh, jobless benefits. Productivity and cost, very important to show how productive the U.S. economy is and the U.S. worker is, 8.30 a.m. PMI, busy, busy, busy week. That's the, uh, 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 what do you call, inflation index and uh, purchasing managers index. So that will give us a read on the U.S. inflationary uh, um, pressures. 
We have factory orders, very important. ISM, non-manufacturing index. Today we got the manufacturing index, ISM, um, right here. See that one? That one was the one that dropped below 50 and uh, kind of hit the market. And uh, fears of, again, looming recession. That's actually not good that we fell below 50, even though it's a one month number, doesn't make a trend. But um, so these are, so till 10 o'clock, very, very busy, starting at 8.15 a.m. Then we have uh, lots of bond auctions for bill for and, and notes auction and all that stuff. And what else do we have? One second, let me scroll up. And then we have money supply, all that stuff, not that important. That covers the economic picture for the week. Each of these numbers do have an impact on a short term basis, whether it's 15 minutes or an hour, unless they're completely out of whack. That means they could have an impact all throughout the day. But generally speaking, they have quick short-term impacts. You see a lot of zigzags on the 15-minute, 30-minute charts, uh, five-minute charts, and uh, in, by now, all of you should be um, quite uh, uh, used to that. Again, we don't like volatility, but volatility is omnipresent, and it's something that we have to deal with. That's why I always say embrace volatility instead of fearing it. And um, that's it. So we're out of this picture right now. Good. Now. Let's get into the chart. Let me barrel through what I'm uh, what I'm seeing. Again, I repeat, we are in some very tricky circumstances with the U.S. stock markets and the global stock markets. We have negative yields galore all around the world. Uh, the U.S. Treasury bond today hit an all. Uh, t I mean, I shouldn't say all-time low, but it, I can remember the last time uh, it was at 1.429 percent at the low. That's 10-year government paper. Okay, that's a 10-year government bond. If you left it in there, you'd barely make 1.429% at the low of the day today if you held it for 10 years, 1.429% on a yearly basis. That's horrendous. Uh, pri the primary reason behind it is significant amounts of global money, trillions of dollars, are pushing into the U.S. Go uh, market, into the safe haven, which is a U.S. 10-year government bond uh, and the U.S. 30-year government bond and such, and they're basically parking their money there. Another reason there, there is which is very important, uh, is that because of uh, the uh, strong U.S. dollar, which President Trump has encouraged the U.S. dollar to weaken, as you all know, um, and I totally agree with him on that res respect, the strong U.S. dollar causes currency fluctuations and imbalances, and foreigners have to buy U.S. dollars in order to buy our government bonds because our government bonds are traded in US dollars. So imagine the demand for US dollars out there, which is artificially enhancing the value of the US dollar against other currencies, which make very make it very hard for other countries to buy our goods because it gets more expensive, right? If you're buying something in Japanese yen and that particular product, uh, that particular um, item, uh, uh, the, and the Japanese yen is going through the roof against the US dollar getting stronger, then obviously you'll have to buy more yen, cost you more to buy that same product. On a reverse basis, that's what's happening here. There is big demand for US treasuries because the rest of the world, most of them in Europe and Asia, are negative yields, primarily in Europe. So that means if they park their money there, they're actually losing money if they hold it for a period of time or through the duration of that particular uh, bond, sovereign bond government bond. So in this case, you can still earn 1.4 some percent, for two, uh, it closed at 1.46%, 1.47% here. So they pile into our markets and just sit there in the government bond market, because that is the safest uh, asset in the world. Uh, we have never defaulted any interest payments on the US Treasury. And uh, that causes demand for US dollars because they have to buy it with US dollars. I think I've made it very simple. This is a very important economic, uh, 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 economic uh, what should I say, fact. And I'm uh, and, and uh, I'm glad that you all have um, allowed me to explain that to you. Hi, Kbot, welcome. So, so saying all that, uh, that's what's going on. We do need a weaker dollar, to be honest with you. Uh, but you cannot intervene in the currency markets, which is a five trillion dollar market, or something monstrous, uh, with the uh, Federal Reserve having something like 50 or 100 billion to intervene with. Right? It's like a little minnow trying to fight a a, a killer whale. You know, it doesn't work like that. So you need to do it through other structural monetary measures. 
not by intervention. Intervention means you go into the foreign currency market and you buy up your own currency to, in, you know, uh, or sell your own currency to lower the value of that. Um, just doesn't work. Okay. So saying all that, let's go. Uh, now we're going to go into. Oh, uh, um, so that's it. Now the other thing I want to mention to you that these are. I repeat again. I know it sounds like a broken record. Extremely volatile market, but volatility can be on the upside and the downside. We all know that. So I predict very soon we are going to get a date for the uh, Chinese delegation to come to Washington DC as President Trump has openly said that talks are ongoing despite the rhetoric on from both sides um, and that the Chinese delegation might arrive anytime in September and they haven't fixed the date yet they're going back and forth with it. Remember, these are very complex negotiations. So it's not like, okay, let's get a ticket on JetBlue and arrive here. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? You got to figure out a lot of stuff because most of the things are decided by the cabinet members, lower level cabinet members and such, and then the big boy sit at the table, shake hands and said, okay, looks like we might have a um, some sort of ceasefire deal. That's how it works in politics. That's what, That's how it works in real life, okay? Uh, they don't make the decisions when President Trump is sitting across from President Xi, uh, Premier Xi. They, they, do, they do that earlier. So anytime, if we get a date, very simple, let's keep this simple. Anytime we get a date for the Chinese delegation coming to September, I mean, coming to Washington, D.C., you're going to see the market pop up anywhere from two to 400 points fast. So if we're not set up with even small amounts of trades, which basically keep your trade sizes small to moderate, you're going to miss that out completely. And we have seen that happen repeatedly over and over again, whether it's a positive tweet out of President Trump or whether it's a positive conciliatory comment out of the Chinese, which just happened last week, you know, where they basically said, we're not going to have a tit for tat. We're not going to raise, uh, raise tariffs again. We're going to sit back a little bit and they made a conciliatory comment. The markets went up 300 points. So that's it. All right. So expect that uh, date to be announced any day now in my opinion, any day. Saying all that, we know what the risks are. Escalation of terror, you know, you can't raise any more tariffs. I mean, it's just going crazy right now. Now, keep in mind that the Chinese tariffs that uh, they retaliated on, uh, that pissed the heck out of President Trump, and of course, uh, 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 rightfully so, um, is the fact, but then they were just retaliating, right? So we moved first, then they moved second. It's a chess game. Uh, that it no, doesn't go into effect on the, on the U.S. Uh, imports till December. Till December, okay? Our ones went into effect yesterday, right? September. So that's the difference. All right. Now, um, saying all that, we have the Brexit situation going on. Uh, it looks like the parliamentary vote, uh, uh, Boris Johnson was defeated in his measure to have a no deal Brexit. That means just walk out of the European Union. Now, don't try to overanalyze this Brexit stuff because like they say, all politics is local. So, um, you know, England is a, is a, it's a fascinating country. I'm sure many of you have visited there. They're very smart people. Um, they rule the world for God knows how many centuries. So, you know, but at the same time, this Brexit is a very divisive issue. And some people say economically it's very devastating. Short term, it is. No question about it. Um, it hits the financial firms. It hits retail sales. It hits a lot of stuff. But uh, it looks like uh, a short-term delay or a defeat at, on a no-deal Brexit, not a deal Brexit, but a no-deal Brexit is net-net positive for global markets and the UK. So the uh, sterling pound, uh, UK pound is slightly stronger right now. And uh, it was quite weak at the lowest point, I believe, yesterday because there was fear that uh, Boris Johnson would just simply walk out. Looks like the parliament has defeated that. They're going to have a vote tomorrow whether to have a new election, God knows what, whatever the case. Any type of delay or any type of resolution which says no, a no deal Brexit is just not doable, the markets will like it. Just keep that simple. All right. Those are the two main things that's, you know, pushing around uh, uh, things. All right. Let's look at charts here. Let's go to the longer term charts and take a look at it just to keep it in perspective. This is your longer term chart that spans all the way back to 2018. Right. Big, big volatility. I'm sure many of you remember that. We actually did pretty well through that. Then we have uh, October to December. The first bout was October to November, then a sharp bounce, and then the crash in December, culminating in a, in a uh, uh, um, I would call it a pivotal bottom. 
at around 2300 S&P uh, or a minis yeah 2300 S&P too uh, and then and then we rallied uh, like no one's business as I had correctly predicted then we came down and then we went up and now we're here now if you look at just focus on two structures please because that's all you need to do um, these are weekly these are weekly bars so each of them is one week so lots of lots of back and forth within that one week which are masked by e, uh, by the colored candles a green candle good red candle bad simple right candlestick dynamics is very important i've self-taught myself this over the years and so can you there are multiple great videos on youtube uh and uh, uh, which you guys should know but because by looking at a candle you can basically process it is messaging you huge amounts of data it's telling you whether it, in simple terms it's telling you whether big uh, whether money is flowing in that means higher or money is flowing out period structure of the candles also tells you a huge amount of information and that's what i try to specialize in every single day trading is a constant learning process it's not a one day thing even to this day i'm learning how to navigate these type of exceptionally uh extremely technical tactical markets and i think i'm getting better and better at it most people give up including individual traders as well as institutional managers who put their ha hands up and say that's it i can't buy this i'll buy when things are right by the time things are right ladies and gentlemen the market is going to be way up as you know things change within minutes you can have a 400 point rally in 10 minutes right or you could drop 300 points in 15 minutes to half an hour so the key is by the time you think it's okay it's done so as traders we want to capitalize and have a position set up both on the long side or if necessary in the short side prior to that event happening now how do we do that because we have no idea what's going to happen overnight in the globex markets um what kind of information is going to come out of china comments what kind of tweet that might arrive late at night or early in the morning for president trump um so we try to basically do a probability study and say whether or not it's okay to buy and so far as far as i can see if you look at this chart um it looks okay to have some long position remember i'm in the business of making money i'm not in the business of being dogmatic if i'm in the business of making money i share it with every single member and free trial subscriber here at clue trading that's the only thing you guys have to know i'm not in the business of having you guys lose money i'm not in the business of having me lose money do i lose money time to time absolutely there are certain positions down while other positions up yes but just remember that one thing straight out that i'm a very sharp reader of the market and i'm trying to sharpen my skills every single day so use that leverage that i have in my brain and try to utilize it to your own benefit but always remember one thing i'm in the business of helping you all i'm in the business of helping myself which means helping my family that's it period so saying all that the two structures here if you if somebody's like absolutely dogmatically bullish then they'll say hey what's the big deal here these are bull flags you can see here a rising wedge bull flag yes they are hundreds of points but they're bull flags within ranges then you get a sharp move higher and then you get another these triangle uh, uh, these two triangle they're falling wedges but they can also be looked at as a bull flag if you want to look at it from a larger context let's do this they still look like bull flags right because bull flags tend to look like that consolidation channels now within that within that um you look to see what the shape of the candles are we had a huge humongous three percent type of rally last week we caught a whole bunch of trades now we are here this is real time so we are retested we retested the we retested the breakout of this bull flag consolidation triangle or you might call it a falling wedge because that's what falling wedges look like right like that go like this and then the breakout so we are we broke out of the falling wedge and now we came back and retested it it can also be looked on if you really zoom in you can also be looked on as a huge candle the green one and then you have a flag which is this so today's action if you look at it from a slightly longer term picture it is basically another bull flag 
Now, when does that bull flag get totally decimated? It gets totally de decimated, ladies and gentlemen, if it falls below the 50, if we give back more than 50 to 60 percent of this big, humongous move that we got off the 2800 level, off the 2800 level uh, last week, then if we give half of that back, you can see visually visually that it's no longer a bull flag you're back into that falling wedge and you're going to go back and retest the 2800 possibly 2790 and that's very possible so keep that in mind and if i do see that type of breakdown like i always say reduce long positions take some spy hedges get out of your long positions in some cases and that's that's the management part you guys have to deal with whether you're a swing trader or a day trader and i'm a combination of both so bottom line is that once we lose 50% of that, which would I would say this this green line here, this green line here, which is roughly 2880 around that level where this arrow is, right? You you want to basically get out of your long position, put out the short positions, and um, and hope that those short positions work, which they don't always work. We know that. Okay, we've been caught in short bear traps last week. Um, luckily small hedges blew up and the long positions took off hedges are very tricky to go heavy short in this type of market where the bearish sentiment is at extremes where we have very we have positive divergences here you can see that okay that's a positive divergence um where you have everybody talking negative all the risks are built into the market pretty much what more risk can you ask for about the market? We know all the crap that has happened. So and the markets have absorbed that and still here. So the bottom line is that if you take a big, large, short position and go to bed overnight, the chances are you're gonna get completely blown up the next morning because the algos hit exactly the, the this cluster of where those puts are on the spike, okay? So be careful about that. So going back to this chart here, nothing really looks wrong. And on a short-term basis, this is the zone that we're looking at, 2750 to 2764, which basically is the is a major resistance. You can see that. It can also be looked on as a head and shoulder. So the broader picture is still a head and shoulder bearish market. In between, you can have two, three, 400-point rallies, which you want to take advantage of. These are very defined charts, and you can basically, if you're playing spike calls or puts, which is the cleanest way to play the market, if you want to look at it that way, these are the charts that you need to live and breathe by. So you have the left shoulder, LS. You have another left shoulder exactly at that point. As I've said many, many times, it's not my uh, 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 skill and my artistry of creating technical charts. It's the algorithmic high frequency trading programs, which are so mathematical. That's why these levels are extreme, so, so precise where I detect where the sellers or buyers are going to come in, right? So left shoulder, here's your head. When we went about 3000, here's your right shoulder. So that right shoulder is somewhere roughly up, um, another, I would say two to 300 points higher somewhere in this 2950 which we hit last week and the 2960 level that's basically it so far this is looking good this year full stochastic showing you the underlying pressure on the market and so far uh, uh, um sorry relative strength in the market the same same underlying buying or selling pressure so this is still trending higher so net net when i look at this and i've been obviously you know i, I live and breathe technical charts this looks pretty okay to me for till we hit the right shoulder again which is a couple of hundred points again we broke break below this 20 and 908 2900 uh, sorry let me get this right here this line is actually 2880 2880 then obviously it does uh, it's 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 it, it becomes likely that we're going to come back and uh, retest 2800 again am i clear on that jody kbot mike Yes? No? Yes. Yes. Okay. Kbot, you can hear us? Oh, thank you, Kbot. Good hearing your voice on the, on, on the text. Kbot's a great person. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. So that's what I'm looking at, plain and simple. All geometric structures. Let's look at the daily. This is your daily chart here. The daily chart is a mixed signal. 
with an upward bias. Some of you say, yeah, what is the upward bias? Well, I'll show you what the upward bias is. The upward bias is the same thing. These, they, remember, there are five trading days in a week. So each, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. So anyway, so five of these candles constitute one of those big candles on the weekly that we just went over. So looking at this here, there's a couple of things happening. First of all, we are in a very powerful trading range. I've shown that to you guys many, many times. This is your trading range. 2,800 at the bottom, roughly, and 2,900 and, and uh, 2,940 on the top. Not 2,900, 2,940 on the top, all right? So if somebody says, well, what do you see here? Well, this is what I see. And I've explained this uh, quite a few times on my real-time feed, but these webinars are designed to basically explain this directly, you know, you hear the directly from the horse's mouth, hopefully a half intelligent horse, i.e. me. So bottom line is this red line here is your 50 day moving average. That 50 day moving average is around 2946. The market hit that 50 day moving average on the 30th, backed off. You can see that right there, right there. See that? Then this was the second, which was yesterday. Markets were closed, but Globex futures move on. This was today, which is a doji right there. Oops. The more you focus on technical charts, the more they'll talk to you. Not going to be always right, but you'll have a much better idea where the markets are going than anyone else out there. Trust me. That's the only thing I rely on. So bottom line is, that's a doji. Nothing wrong with that. This line here is your mid Bollinger. This brown thick line or orange thick line, whatever, is your 34-day moving average. We penetrated to the 34-day moving average a couple of times. This was the holiday, so I'm going to put a cross. This was yesterday. Today, we hit the 34-day moving average. We are heading back towards the 34-day moving average. If we break above that, we could get a sharp move. Futures are up about four right now. We could get a sharp move again towards the upper trading range, which is 29.46. Ladies and gentlemen, to a lot of people, numbers mean nothing. To us, as technical traders, to many of you as, as, as technical traders, it means a lot. Because when we move from 2900 to 2940, we're talking about a 280 to 350 point rally on the Dow, which blows sky high on a positive way and profits are showered on us on positions that we have taken, whether it be the Amazon whether it be the Boeings, which was down uh, 10 bucks today, uh, whether it be Nvidia, whether it be Apple, which is another simple way to trade the broader market, okay? Multiple, uh, 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 multiple trades, whether it be the spies, let's look at the cleanest version of playing the market, the SPYs, the spiders. These are big movers. Your spies can get you anywhere from 60 to 70 to 150 to 200% on your money. You take it because we know this is a formidable resistance. If we break above that, the ultimate formidable resistance comes into play around 29.45 or so, or around 29.50 on the S&P 500, which we're gonna look at in a couple of minutes. So that's a big move. Gentlemen, the market is trading in a range. The markets are, the volatility is not, it's what I call structured volatility. So if there is a structure to the volatility, then I can define it. Unstructured volatility, which are black swan flash crashes that happen from nowhere, those are unstructured. But we also know that if we get a 600 point drop that we can fall to the bottom of the range, which is 2,800. This is certainly positive, no question about it. The full stochastics. The, histo uh, the histogram, uh, histograms on the MACD, which is being represented here in, a, in, a, in, in, in the green area, is still looking pretty okay. What we do need to see are the stochastics on the MACD sharply curl higher. By the time this acceleration happens, the markets will be up more than 400 points and trying to punch through the 50-day moving average. Remember, the more times that we punch, as long as the internals are cooperating, they're slanting higher, the more we are punching on the upper end of the range, there's a high probability we're going to break out. Because we have stayed below the 50-day moving average for quite a long time, for, in, for almost the entire month, 
Yeah, for the entire month of August. And that's pretty unheard of, to be honest with you. We got close, but we didn't quite get there. So uh, so that's why, you know, I put the mommy, are we there yet, right? So there you go. So bottom line is the 50-day moving average, surprisingly, through all this intense volatility. Remember, this intense volatility is not just on the downside. Boom, 800-point drops, 1,000-point moves up, down, up, down, up. Okay? That's the nature of the beast, ladies and gentlemen. So the bottom line is that uh, that uh, this is okay, this is good, and so far we just need a move over to the upper end of the range, and we shall see. Once we approach that 2140, 2140 level on the E-minis or so, you better make sure that whatever profit you have, you grab it, because right there, so repeated times we have had sell programs, right? That's it. Upper Bollinger is at 29.57 or so. Maybe we get there. I don't know. We are still in a head and shoulder pattern on the daily, just like on the weeklies. Why? There's your head, double top. There's your left shoulder. There's, there's your left shoulder. This is your neckline, this big green line right there. And this is your right shoulder. So once we get there, it's going to hit the right shoulder again. What happens with the right shoulder? Generally speaking, if it punches through, see you later, that'll happen on very positive US-China trade negotiations. Maybe trade delegation comes in and you know gives something that can happen. That's called decimation of the head and shoulder. But for now, we're still in a head and shoulder pattern. We are simply trading the ranges. And I just explained it to you. And this is your neckline right there. Remember, this is what a head and shoulder looks like right with a neckline like that the big head and shoulder neckline is down here at 2740 do we get there maybe that's a long way down ladies and gentlemen that's almost 1600 to 1700 dow points down can that happen sure it can happen in the month of i would say october can happen watch Can happen, but we shall see. One day at a time, with a little, with a couple of, you know, we can only forecast a couple of days at a time. Um, I'm not going to sit here and forecast what's going to happen over the next four weeks, five weeks. This is your S&P 500. No futures, nothing. This is a static number. To me, the chart doesn't look that bad. We came down almost. We tested this big broken down trend line. This was the huge gap open on the 29th. We blew past it. I told you we're going to go there. And then right there, when you see a candle like that, that's, an, that's, a, that's like an inverted hammer. That's, that's basically the big boys just dump, boom. Then we had a systematic crash. We tried to pull up. And this, again, is a head, left shoulder, right shoulders, right? So if we break above that, we're going to retest the 294 again. I told you we're going to go there last week, and we did. For a split second, but we did. So that was the time to sell. This is what we are right now. And it's looking like a kind of a W pattern. It's all technical stuff. And I explained to you what the upside can be. So that's your daily chart. Stochastics are getting overbought, but let's see whether it crosses down or whether it moves sideways. If it moves sideways, that means that we are going to go higher. Futures are up about five right now. Live Globex futures. Let's go. Uh, let's go into the hourly chart here. This is hourly chart. This has a little bit of a visual effect to keep, keep people's attention. Um, you can see what kind of flash crashes and stuff depicted here that we have encountered. Right. This is where we are right now. Why did this expand? Bear with me. This should be like this. This should be more like this. Any questions you guys have, feel free to stop me and I'll certainly explain that to you. Just showing you the broader picture, then we're going to go into some stocks. So if you look at this, and I put a couple of captions here, tariffs going to effect and this and that. To me, 
As a tactical trader, I'm looking at ranges. Upper end of the range, 29.49, 29.50. Lower end of the range, 28.20. That's quite a wide range. That's 120, 130 points multiplied by roughly eight to convert it into Dow points. You're talking about a thousand plus points or 1,040 between this and this. This is what rocks the boat and throws everyone off scale. And I'm just showing you that these, this is what's going on. The market's basically just moving within this very wide thousand plus point range. So if it hits around there, maybe it pulls back again and retest uh, the 2800 again. So let's try to capitalize on this move to get there. Okay. My opinion, that probably can happen this week. It's my opinion. Okay, real tactical trading charts for short-term traders, short-term swing as well as day traders, both short and long are these charts. These charts are precious. Every one of the levels that I, I have drawn, and I don't draw them after the fact, I draw them before the fact, as you all know, are engaged during the day. Lots of back and forth, back and forth. That's why it's a 15 minute chart. So if you look at this and you wanna just kind of, you know, I called, I, I showed you today about the volatility cluster, which is another chart this could very well be this so that's another seven uh, that's another 17 points or so multiplied by eight taking the wider range on the dow jones that's roughly that's 17 s p points so that translates into roughly 136 dow points nothing to get excited about it's simply again if that's the head here's your left shoulder it simply hits the right shoulder you want to be a seller at that point do you want to buy some puts at that point sure you can but Given the ferocity of the market, given the background conditions being excessive bearishness, given the fact that any time any piece of good news can ramp the market up 500 points, you got to be careful if you put out a short. Just because the levels are showing it doesn't mean it's a short. Because if we break out of here, we're going to go straight up to the 2947, 2950 level. And for spy traders buying the 292 calls or the 294 calls, this is the chart you want to be trading on. And those, see, like I said today, if you buy the lottos and you buy small amounts, it can turn into big amounts. Why? Because the market is inclined, like a coil spring in some cases, to really spring up because there are no real buyers in the market. They're all sellers on every little dip. So any type of good news will spark a big short squeeze, big inflow of money coming in from the sidelines. And the 10-year yield obviously going higher, money would come out of the safe haven, the government bond market, into the stock market. So the risk is more to the upside, in my opinion, short term than to the downside. But we do know what the downside is. It's all there in this chart. Nothing to really explain, all defined. So next is the same chart, except trying to show you a pattern. I try to read a little bit more into the charts and share it with my people. And what I noticed was, this is just a visual observation, that the volatility cluster here and the decline from here resembles very much the volatility cluster for here and the decline from here. It looks very similar. So if it's very similar, then we should have, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I don't care what people say. All right. So technically speaking, since the 25th of or since the drop, 23rd of August, 23rd. Okay. This is what happened. Extremely volatile. We try. I tried to structure it as much as possible to use it as a GPS roadmap. This was an in, large inverse head and shoulder with a left shoulder, a right shoulder, a neckline. And it also transformed into a complex W. It broke out. It broke out as I forecasted at around 3.30 in the morning on the 29th and shot straight up, almost straight up, culminating into a high at around 29.50 or so on the 30th at 5.45 in the morning, 6 in the morning. And then at 9.30, the market sold off. 
we literally had a minute or two to get out of positions. So that's why it gets so busy do, 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 do the first part of the morning. So bottom line is we retested that repeatedly, created a volatility cluster. What's a volatility cluster? That's where the bulls and bears are fighting to support a support level, which is this. So they fought all day long, and now they're moving the futures up higher. And I showed you that, that if you want to look at it as a complex W, then the pattern resolves itself at around 29.30 or so. All right? So 29.30 means that you're talking about 140, 150 points on the Dow. It's really as simple as that. It really is. Now, one quick thing uh, that uh, many of you might have noticed or not. That sometimes it doesn't matter what happens during the day. It never tells you the direction what the market's going to take in the Globex market and what's gonna happen the following morning. Why? Because a lot of these um, manipulated, markets are manipulated, let's face facts, okay? Uh, futures, big e-mini traders, maybe, who knows, big investment banks, hedge funds, whatever, they like to do the action after hours because they know that's where the majority of the investors are not there. So that's why they run things after hours. They'll close at the lows and they'll run it up 10, 15 S&P points. You've seen that happen a lot. So if you're not positioned prior to that and you're not understanding this volatility cluster, how similar that is, what happened after this volatility cluster? The market went higher. So is it not possible that the same volatility cluster that the market goes higher? So if you're not positioned during the day, you're going to completely miss out that zap that you get and the chance to sell out within the first 5, 15, 20, 30 minutes the following morning, and you can just simply close your book and walk away. So if you don't have the setup before, you're not going to make the money. Because by the time you're chasing the market here, it's already on the right shoulder, and they're going to sell. That's it. So that's an, uh, the last chart I want to show you on the market. Then we're going to look at some stocks, which I say these small lot of stocks, which can pay some very huge bills. Um, Let's take a look at the S&P 500 and see how, uh, on a visual uh, perspective, how far we are. Remember, the magnet, just simple things to remember, all right? The magnet is the 50-day moving average. We want to get to the 50-day moving average. We fail there, it doesn't matter. We want to get there. So this is your daily. This is your daily. This is what we are. We're trading in a range. Let me zoom in better. And please stop me with any questions you anyone has. Okay, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Best way to play these markets, if you want to play it clean, is the spies. That's it. There's nothing to it. Let's get the internals down so we have a bigger screen. This looks pretty damn good. You can see here. I don't need to explain that to you. This full stochastic is looking pretty damn good. That's why I am biased long. Not because I feel something, it's because I'm my charts are telling me something. And of course, I mix in the other factors that I explained to you guys. So let me get this. Okay, gentlemen. So I, I focus on details because the details make me money. And I know many of you are doing that too. It's not that hard to do. Here's your red line. That's your, and you can see that on your screen too. That's your 50-day moving average. Where is that 50-day moving average? At 2943.84. Let's call it 2944. Okay, right there. That's your 50-day moving average. Right here is your downward sloping 34-day moving average. So one way or the other, we either hit the 2930, that's 28 points from here, multiply 28 by 8. That's roughly 200 and 24 points from here to here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. 28 points times eight is 224 points. How would you like to have SPY calls um, bought at 60 cents, 70 cents, $1.30, you know, and the market, market goes up 224 points? You would very easily make anywhere depending on the strike uh, depending on the time value left depending on the delta and the gamma and how fast those options are moving you can quite easily make 80 to 140 percent maybe more on the spy calls the spy weekly calls which means the dow jones industrial average i'm going to call it dj the dow jones up 
224 points just to get to the 34 day moving average. I'm not even looking at the 50 day moving average. All right, that's that red line here. You will make up anywhere from 80 to 140%. A small amount of money gives you free money, but you need to be set up with that prior to the move happening. S&P futures right now are up, up about 750, 7.50. Um, and you can see that this is a static chart. This is the actual S&P 500, but the E-minis are moving right now quite fast. It's up eight. This is partly to do, I'm sure, with the one fix, which happens at 9.15. We want a weaker one. I'm sorry, we want a slightly stronger one. Um, and we don't want the Chinese government to depreciate the one too much and make their exports cheaper. We have already explained that before. So the bottom line is that a move of 200 plus points on the Dow Jones will generate you anywhere on the SPY weekly calls 80 to 140 percent. Small amount of money, you make some decent money. If you want to go in really hard, fine, you make a lot of money in that case. So let's take a technical look at that chart. If we, this is your 50 day moving average, we seem to be below the 50 day moving average, like I explained previously, for a full month, unheard of. So at this point in time, I would say, no, we actually were below the 50 day moving average for almost a month here between the months of May and June. All I'm saying is the best case scenario, we at least retest this sideways to slightly higher sloping. Imagine that the 50 day moving average is still kind of trending higher. with A slight slope down, even through this intense volatility. So when you see all those uh, haters, all of those bears who want the U.S. economy to collapse, who want the recession to arrive at your doorstep tomorrow morning at 9.30, who think that President Trump will fail in everything he's doing, uh, and who think that the, that the U.S. is, uh, is going to hell in the handbasket, and all that garbage that you hear from the dogmatic bears, okay? They all have a hidden agenda, in my opinion, or they're just plain idiots. All you have to do is look at this chart and tell me why isn't the 50-day moving average completely collapsing down despite all this volatility? Simply ask yourself that question. Now, if we have a trend of weakening economic numbers for the next month or two months, of course, the economy is going to go into a recession. So saying all that, this is what we're looking at. If we move from here where we are right now, where we closed at 2906 and we move to 2942, that's 36 points multiplied by eight, that's 288 points on the Dow. You're going to at least get 150 to 180 percent, if not 200 percent, on your spike calls. So a small amount of money that's not going to put you out on the streets. You want to be set up prior to that. So this is where we are with this. This is what we, I would like to see from a complete technical perspective. I'd like to see this do this. That's when you get a sustained multi-day rally not just chop, 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 like we're getting. This is positive. The histogram, the three green bars. How about we get a four, five, six, seven, eight green bars? Then you're gonna see these lines cross up. That's, do you wanna wait that long? Sure, but then you're gonna miss out most of the rally, just like most of the times people have. Despite the fact they know in their technical part of their brain that that's not what they should be doing, but what, that's what they do. So I'd rather have some money prior, take a little bit of the, looking at the PL red on a weekday, but at least set up the positions so that three days from now, five days from now, two days from now, I'm shooting fish in a barrel, selling these at a huge profit. So that's what we're seeing. We need this to go over zero. And then you're going to see this histogram, uh, uh, histograms, bars, just completely explode higher, it happened in June, happened after June, uh, December 24th, Christmas Eve massacre, and you get sustained multi-day rallies between quick one, two-day consolidation bull flags. I mean, consolidation uh, sell-offs. Are we there yet? No. If we see this completely break down, we're in trouble. That's what I showed you on the technical side. If we break below 2880 um, or something like that, then these these uh, uh, these this MACD will turn down. You don't you know at that point we have to go net short 
take down the loan positions. So that is, so that's it. Don't want to over-dramatize this situation here. On the broader scale, this is a very wide band, 3,000 and 2,700. Right, 3,000 roughly and 2,700. That's 300 points to the common person out there. Oh, what's 300 points? That's simply it's just 300 points. Yeah, right, it says 300 points. Multiply it by a factor of eight. This is a 2,400 Dow trading range. 2,400 plus minus, right? 2,400 plus minus. That's big. Now, the other thing which might give you guys some hope in a simple way um is we closed here today we're simply back to where we were on october 3rd of last year so when somebody says oh the market's on a runaway trade it's so overvalued you're like duh it's really overvalued okay great you know i don't want to get into you know pe multiples and all that stuff it's running between 15 and 16 or something like that with bearishness sky high with seven plus trillion dollars sitting in cash, uh, oh yeah, the market's overvalued. In the meantime, the bond yields are at 1.4%, while S&P 500 dividend yield is in north of 2%. Now you go figure that. It's it just flipped in the past week or so. That's crazy. You hold the stock, you get paid to wait more than 2% of your money. You sit on the safest asset in the world, you make 1.4% on the money. It doesn't make sense. So the bottom line is that we are simply back to where we were on October of 2018. Just keep things simple, right? This is where we are. We are back to where we were in April of this year. So why can't we move up above the 50-day moving average or at least kiss the 50-day moving average, which is a solid 300 points from here? So no, the market is not overbought or overvalued. Just wanted to explain that to you guys, okay? Back in October, 2018, we're simply back there again. After attempting, we busted a move above that, right? We know that in July, and now we're here. All right, let's talk some, uh, any questions on these uh, on these charts? No. Not, okay. Making sense today, Jody? Yes. Yes, sir. This nice, relaxing weekend. I spent some nice time with family on Friday. No tweets. It was great. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, it, it was great. Okay. Yes. So, what was that? I said, yes, it was a great weekend. Yes, very good. Thank you. So what am I looking at in the case of Amazon? So this is your Amazon daily chart. The bulls on Amazon, by the way, they, these analysts and some of them are very smart. For that. They keep on raising their price targets, 2,600. You've seen that, right? I mean, I, I forgot to post it, 2,400. Amazon sitting here at 1,786. We're up about 20 some percent. We're up about 40% on those calls. I scalped a little bit, then got back in again. We're up about 20% on, on the call, 25% for the day, and they're putting up 2,400 uh, Amazon price target. Forget 2,400 Amazon price target. I don't even know whether it goes there or not. I, it's not my business. My business is to make money and help my members make money. So what am I looking at here on the Amazon thing? I find Amazon to be an excellent buy within this trading range. What is this trading range? This trading range is, you can read the numbers on the side, the 20 day moving average is 1834. Let me just zoom in. I just want to show you the big picture on Amazon. So there we go. That's better. Forget about 1960 and stuff. If we get there, you guys can, you know, you're going to make the biggest profits you ever made in your life. Can happen, but you got to be positioned right. Put in 500 bucks, just sit there for a week. If the five goes to 10, Remember, I told you guys to buy this at around five. It went to nine. That's 80%. And then it pulled back to about four and change and ended the day close to six. Up about 26 to 30%. So, and this is just on, on this move here. See, this is the trading range. This trading range is 
and I showed you uh, Amazon, beautiful charts on Amazon on my Twitter feed, so uh, uh, please uh, take a look at it. So you got this here on the upper end, and you got this here on the lower end. It's a very defined trading range, very defined trading range. You can play the Amazon trading range all week long, but get ready for volatility. Amazon moves six, seven, eight per, uh, dollars, which doesn't make a ditto, uh, a dent in the percentage because it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a, you know, eighteen hundred dollar stock or seventeen hundred eighty six dollar stock. So, so there's your trading range: seventeen forty two, eighteen thirty five, or call it eighteen forty five. So they trade to keep it simple. Amazon is a hundred point trading range. We bought the stock at around here. So all I'm saying is if it goes to 1800, which it did today, you're going to make 80% of your money. If it goes and touches the upper end of the trading range, 1840, that's the reason why we got the 1820 calls, right? They're reasonable and they follow, they match what I'm seeing on the chart. So futures are up about nine. Amazon will most probably, it was up uh, our 15 at one point, ended the day up what, about 11 or so? Um, Amazon will gap open 15 points, which would bring it up to like 1810, whatever. So bottom line is, sorry, 15 points would bring it up to slightly above 1800. So key is if it does go to 1840, which is the upper end of the range where it gets rebuffed, right? Sellers here, you are going to make a triple on your money. You're going to make 300%. So what gives? Got to do it. Got to do it. You know what your downside is? So if it pulls back here within this, then there's a mini range here in between this wide range. This is a 100-point range roughly. This is actually more of a 100-point range right there. Okay, this is like an 80-point range. And in between, if it moves 1, 10, 15 bucks, it doesn't matter. You got to program your mind like that. So if you bought it at, let's say, let's say you got in at six, or let's say you were a little late and you got in at seven, it's not a matter of being late, you got in at seven. If it pulls back to five, if you can buy one more call, or if it really falls down to four, then it's more attractive to buy one more call at a cheaper price because it brings your cost average down. That's the way to do it, as long as it's within the range. And then you get a burst move like that, which features up 10 points, hopefully features stay up. 9, 10 points by the morning, Amazon will be up here and you'll have more than double your money. If it does get ever, I, what am I saying ever? I'm really turning into an idiot. Of course it will, one point or another. Get back to the 50, uh, sorry, the 50 day moving average at 1880. Ladies and gentlemen, you will make a killing because from where it closed at and it, and it, and it, and it goes to the 50 day moving average, it takes a couple of days for that to happen. Just the way the stock falls in succession, it rises like that. Bang, bang, bang. And you're sitting there going, oh my God, why am I not in it when I had a chance? So if it goes up here, that's 100 points on Amazon from there. Your original calls, which you certainly don't want to hold, you want to move it, move to the higher strikes and a cheaper cost. But if you held the original calls, that $5 calls would be 50. We have shown that happened before. So you put 500, you take 5,000 dollars out. You put 5,000, you take $50,000 out. Isn't that a beautiful feeling? But you got to be in it to win it. So Amazon, real simple, ranges, ranges, smaller range, 1800 to 1775 or 1765, wider range, 1835 to the lower 1745. We don't want to be holding on to our calls if it drops to 1745, that's for sure. I'm too scared to short Amazon, so I'm not going to short the stock because this will rip my head off. So I'd rather be either going long or get out of a position if I'm slipping too far low. If it hits the 34-day moving average, that's 1845. If it hits the 50-day moving average, 1880. And it'll still be a longer-term bearish pattern. Why? Because this is your head. This is your left shoulder. Your right shoulder comes into play at 1970. This is exciting trading. I don't need to say more.
not only analysts are upping their prices big time, you get internals which are starting to turn green on the histograms, very similar to the S&P 500. You have a crossover just happening today on the full stochastics. This is exciting. Big volume, big volume, three and a half million shares. Not huge, but big. You can see that. That's a lot of money. Title multiply three and a half million by 1800. I, I can't even figure that out. Okay. And you can, we, then you'll arrive at the amount of dollars that went in. So Amazon, we like. Let's take a look at some real turnaround place where we can buy some calls September, October, November. GameStop. GameStop has a story behind it. Um, one of the biggest guys, uh, and I'll put out that story out there, who basically the, it was in the movie, The Big Short, which I'm sure some of you have seen. This guy was the analyst who figured out that the whole mortgage market was going to go to hell in the handbasket. He has his own private equity firm, investment firm, and he likes buying real undervalued assets. He picked two stocks, Tailored Brands, which I have no idea what it is, TLRD, also a $5, that's a $5 stock, and he picked GameStop, which we already know. And GameStop used to be an $18 stock, languished around $325, and right now is around $393. The calls are dirt cheap. I'm excited about this. Google, GameStop, and put in a uh, 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 fund manager, what's his name? And he, this guy, he put in some serious coin in taking an active participatory stake in GameStop. And he's the guy who made billions of dollars predicting the demise of the US housing market and the mortgage market and the whole collapse of the financial system back in 2007, 2008, 2009. Now you go figure, I'll go with him any day. I like this, lots of headroom, calls are dirt cheap. GME September 20 calls are 14 cents. I see them moving between 6 cents to 14 cents to 15 cents. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 100% return on your money. What if those 14 cents and the stock actually gets to about 566? I believe it goes between, uh, between 5 to 572. Those 14 cents will be up to almost a dollar. You go do the math, how much money you're going to make. And if you can't afford 14 cent calls, I have no idea what you're doing. Okay? That's 614% on your money just for GameStop to get up here. 614% net, 714% total. Okay, gross is 714% move upside on those calls from 14 cents to a dollar. I'm kind of guest guesstimating and you can make that. And I'm not talking, I'm talk even talking about closing this gap here at 766. I'm talking about closing the gap here around six. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exciting. You can buy a bunch and do what you need to do and just leave it in there. Why September 20th? Look out to October. Give yourself town, time. What does GameStop have to do with China? This is an exciting play. Another one I like is American Airlines. I mentioned that last week. I like buying undervalued. I shouldn't say undervalued because I'm not an analyst, but I will say that technically undervalued stocks. This sold off like a monster from 35 down to 24. We bought and buying a, uh, uh, American Airlines September 20 calls at 8, 9, 10 cents. Come on, guys. Now, yes, I'm being very aggressive and I bought the 30 calls. But what if this actually moves up to 30? you will make a thousand percent return on your lottos. People, you know, it's, it's not a joke, right? It's not a joke. 140 bucks can go to 1400 bucks or $1,500. I like American Airlines, a uh, good solid name. I think we can trade it up to 28.7. We can trade it up to about 29. If you trade it to 29, I mean, wow, you're going to make a ton. Even if it moves up to 28, you're going to make up a ton. Even if it moves to 27, you're going to make a ton of money. And the calls are dirt cheap. Technicals are favored. I mean, technicals are cooperating. You can see that. Get this. This. I like a lot. Every single time it's done that, the stock has gone up approximately four to five dollars four to five dollars that's exactly what i'm betting on here four to five dollars 
from 26 right there, four to five dollars every single time thing. Guys, this is just to overthink it. You just have to buy a bunch and just leave it in there. Now, if the stock turns around and breaks 24, that's a different story. But so far, so good. I like it. Uh, what's the other one, real cheap one that I pushed out today? I did miss a big earnings say today that was on my list and I'm an idiot for that. I do apologize. It's Coupa Software, C-O-U-P. I was looking at those calls around five, six dollars. These are September 20th, 140 calls. The stock is up $14 after hours. What to do? Nothing, right? You're gonna miss some. I feel really crappy about it though. I should, should have bought it. Anyway, for now, for now, uh, uh, those are good. Let's take a quick look at pizza. Pizza basically went up and fell really hard. Don't know the reason for this fall particularly, but nothing changed technically. Look, very nice. Slight drop down here. We did very well in pizza on the run up, took some nice profits at that big downtrend line. And now we get this pullback for people who never made money on pizza, uh, on, on, on Papa John's. This is a major acquisition. This is a, see, in my opinion, see a long-term Chipotle type of situation, a turnaround play. Maybe not the exact sequence, but still, it takes multi-months, by the way. Uh, you will have a chance to buy this stock in this range. So please keep a lookout for that, and I'll certainly be revisiting it. Um, okay, questions. Who wants to see what? Oh, breaking news is China uh, August Kaixin composite PMI. That's their purchasing manager index was higher. There was also another good piece of China uh, news from China. China's factory orders actually went higher. You know, uh, uh, thing. Yesterday. Uh, CRM, yes. So uh, I'm looking at CRM's chart here for our great member, uh, KBOT. I'm looking at the daily chart. Uh, and I'm not that excited, but I shouldn't say I'm not that excited, but the stock is fine because this, this is, this is a cup. See CRM, the reason it doesn't move a lot after earnings and stuff is because it's got a lot of stock out there and it's a very well-loved stock, right? So this is actually technically a very positive chart. This is a cup and it's a handle. What does the handle measure? That's how we look at it from a technical basis. Upper end of the handle is 158. Lower end of the handle is 157. So we got seven points here. KBOT, you can trade the stock for seven points overall, given somewhat stable market conditions, or you can look to see if the stock is going to break out over 158, in which case it's going to revisit 165. So you can wait for the breakout, or if it's moving higher, towards the upper handle, or this is a good favorable buy, you're good to go. Um, does that answer your question, KBOT? Okay, good. But I just believe that there are better choices than CRM because one of the things I want to explain to all of you, and this is just my philosophy, if I'm trading risk money, which is options is risk money, we know that, right? Um, I want to go into the ones that move the fastest. I mean, give me that, give me my, those rewards, give me that treasure, give me the loot, like we say in New York, give me the loot fast. Let me get out of Dodge. Let's just rob the options bank and get out. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to try to play things like Umbrella, things like Tesla, things like Amazon, things like uh, uh, Roku, uh, which is just nuts if you ask me. Uh, I'm not even in it right now. Uh, and or or Shopify to catch it at the right time, stocks up $15 the next day. So those are the type of things I'd be looking at. CRM is fine. I like Microsoft because the options move nicely. Uh, I like Apple because options are elastic, they move nicely. But uh, I'm not saying I'm not a big fan of CRM, I'm just giving you better ideas, that's all. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, Tesla. Tesla's one heck of a, uh, crazy stock. I mean, it moves up. You got to scalp profits fast. Then it pulls down. See, my basis on Tesla 
is that the 50-day moving average at 232. The stock did go to 232 on Friday. Today, it opened up. May, I, I, I took out some money, though, because when it opened down, I bought. The 50-day moving average, again, is 232. So the key is the stock's at 225. If the stock is going to get bought by uh, uh, some institutional funds and stuff, even though they traded, hedge funds traded, they need to see a breakout over the 50-day moving average. And you're going to see a direct moonshot to the 150-day moving average, which is 250. There's a big gap here. And that gap needs to get filled. That's at 260. The lower end of the gap is around 230. So overall, net-net, Tesla's good to go. They have good China favorable uh, situation there uh, with China giving them a whole exemption on uh, parts. They're opening up the Shanghai plan. Lots of shorts in Tesla. Nobody likes Tesla. You can look at it as a longer term play. I like to play Tesla with a very short leash on, you know, uh, because it's such a wild moving stock. Is this it can be looked on as a head and shoulder that broke down. I mean, that was the inverse head and shoulder, and now it's creating a mini inverse complex head and shoulder, but needs to break out over 230 in order to get attention by institution holders, and it's going to move really fast. Very event-driven stock. you got to keep a very close eye on it. So that's the way I look at it. Any others? Amborella, I like. This stock has come back from the dust. I didn't catch it from the bottom, but this is significant. This was the earnings play. It opened up big. We missed, I forgot to put this on the earnings again. Big mistake of mine. And um, then it pulled back a little bit, got another chance to buy it, and look what it did. These are very bullish structures. Now, what was the upper end of this range? 52. What was the lower end of this range? 37. What's the depth of this range? 15. Add 15 to 52, you get to 67. Can this stock go to 67? I believe it can. I believe it can. They're either big short positions getting uh, thing, uh, 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 squeezed. On top of that, they had terrific numbers, and they're not getting that hurt by what's happening in China. This is a very specialized company. It's one of the hottest stocks I used to trade. 65. What did I tell you? It breaks this range with a vengeance. It didn't just break it like little. Look at the size of these things. These are normally what we call marching soldiers. You get a three-day move, three or four-day move, huge volume. Everything else is good. The MACD is above zero and rocketing higher. Volume uh, The MACD bars are moving, expanding fast. All the right technical signs are there. Not to mention that you can't get a downgrade from somebody. You know, we have to live with that stuff. So the bottom line is 50. Let's call it 50 on the lower end. Let's call it around 30. That's 20 points on the weekly. Add 20 to 50, you arrive at 65 to 70, which was the last previous high on the stock. I think this is a good play. And you can see that clearly. The range breakout of this magnitude, this range was has been in there since July, since June, since a year. Wow. More than a year. Year and a couple of months. Longer the range, the bigger the break. So this is pretty significant. It was a turnaround quarter for them. All right. Have a great uh, evening. I know I went above my, a lot of time, my self-imposed time. But you guys ask great questions. Great to see Jody. Great to see KBot. Always great to see Mike Cage and everyone else who's going to be listening. Guys, we're in this boat together. I don't BS around. Sometimes I get a little bit rowdy, but that's my nature. I'm a New Yorker. Ask Donald. We get rowdy, okay? But we're straight to the point. Take us at our word. We don't fluff things up for saying, oh, this is so easy and stuff. It is easy if you're set up right. You can't just walk in the middle of the day and say, oh, let's see what's going on. Yes, you can. You can just buy one of my trades and just sit there. But I'm just simply saying this volatility is just intense. But I've explained everything very well today. We shall see each other again on the Sunday webinar. Um, and in the meantime, anyone has any questions, reach out to me, DM me, direct message me, send me a, 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 a that's the best way to do it, direct message me. 
Come in the chat room, ask the question, even though no one's really there during the summer or whatever, that's fine with me. It allows me more time to focus on, on helping you guys and um, or, or, or sit in the free sessions, join the ACS sessions, just constantly keep on learning. I am constantly learning and I'm just hungry to learn more because these markets are fascinating. They're fascinating, okay? So saying all that, last look before your bedtime is your, um, this is your trading range on the on the one hour E-minis. You can see that. I kind of put a box around it. One second, there you go, okay? Upper end of the trading range is 29.47. See what I told you? I showed you another chart. This is on Tinkerswim. Lower end of the trading range is first, lower end of this trading range is 28.90, right? You don't want to be breaking 28.90. Then you're kind of cliff diving out there in the lagoon. This is your wide range, very wide range. Forget that, we're looking at this range. Upper end of the range is right here, around 29.30. Upper end of the range that your big seller selling has always come in, at least for now. This is the same chart on investing.com, except it's on Thinkorswim. You can see this little spike here, this little spike here that is happening as we were doing the session. This spike is good for nine S&P points. So if you really want to zoom in, just zoom in like that and you can see there it goes. I don't like zooming in that close because it doesn't give me a better uh, perspective. But if you do a 15 minute chart, and you look at this and say, okay, I can see we can go to 29.26. We'll probably go to 29.26 by the morning. So if Amazon's up a lot and stuff like this, they always sell gap opens and then reevaluate. Sometimes I'm wrong. The market just keeps on surging. Well, jump back in. Always have some cash on the side. On that note, God bless you all. Great to see you. And uh, like I said, reach out to me. Whatever I, I've learned or I'm doing, I'll share. And um, that's it. Referrals, love to get more referrals. We had a couple of people quit the standard business, right? And this business market gets volatile, you know, they're not looking for help, not blaming anybody. And uh, I'm simply saying, you gotta be strong. You can trade these type of markets, you can trade anything out there. And always tell yourself that when you run into, and when you're frustrated and you're looking at the crazy volatility and the stochastics are not crossing over, you're like, come on, you're shorted and your short's not working, you know? Just always remember, those are the days you are truly transforming into a real, real tactical trader. God bless you all. God bless America.